Let's look back at Halo 5 Guardians. In 2015, 343 Industries releases Halo 5 Guardians on the Xbox One. There are many angles I want to talk about, but I think it'll be best to start at the marketing. This video will spoil some moments of Halo 2, 4, 5, and Infinite. Halo 5 ignores some of the events in Halo 4, and Infinite ignores some events in Halo 5. Halo 2 and Halo 5 have some parallels, so they will be mentioned. A key moment that leads to Halo 5's overall negative reception was the marketing and the Hunt the Truth campaign. The main aspect of this campaign was a series of audio logs. It consisted of fictional interviews and lore information surrounding Master Chief and his involvement in Halo 5. When it was all said and done, the audio logs would total up to nearly 6 hours of content. The premise was to show that Master Chief was not the person you think he is, as a hero or savior, and that he was some sort of traitor, working under his own accord. The series centers around a journalist and war photographer, Benjamin Giroux, played by Keegan-Michael Key, who puts on an incredible performance. The information in Hunt the Truth is plentiful, but the takeaway was going to lead into a new Spartan, Locke, tasked with taking down Chief for his potential war crimes in Halo 5. There's plenty to look into, even if the original posts on Tumblr have been deleted. One of the biggest pieces of information to come out of the marketing was that the famous Halo 2 box art that we all know was heavily manipulated to paint Chief in a more positive light. This was all intriguing and meant to spark interest in the game, but at the end of the day, Halo 5 did not touch on any of these topics. Locke is the head of Fireteam Osiris, also consisting of Buck, Tanaka, and Vale. Their mission is to find and apprehend Chief and Blue Team as they pursue Cortana. This leads into another point of scrutiny with the game. A majority of Halo 5 you play as Locke, a character we don't know much about who directly opposes Chief the entire game. The goal they had was to use this episodic series to tell Locke's backstory, which ended up getting horrible reviews, called Halo Nightfall. On top of that, a promotional image was used for Halo 5, which shows Locke front and center, while Chief literally mirrors him upside down. Halo 5 focuses more on Osiris trailing Blue Team and in the meantime doesn't create a good character with Locke. If you didn't know, Bungie faced similar backlash with Halo 2, having you play half the game as the Arbiter, a new alien character. He goes from being a general in the Covenant ranks to being casted out, learning the truth of his religion and then eventually turning against the Covenant and allying with the humans. Arbiter goes through a full arc. Locke does not. The player has gotten to know Chief and Cortana extremely well, and then putting them into the shoes of the man trying to arrest him without justifying it didn't go over well. Unlike Halo 2, you get to play as Chief for substantially less than half of the total playtime. Three missions out of the 15 in the game you play as Chief. 343 later regretted the decision to focus less on him. They underestimated that players have grown an attachment to Chief rather than just using him as a vessel into this world. They rectify this in Halo Infinite. But that's not all. A big part of Halo 4's story was Chief finding a way to save Cortana from rampancy, and ultimately failing as she sacrifices herself. The players are given an emotional scene as Chief says goodbye to Cortana at the end of the game. Halo 5 throws that out the window, letting you know that Cortana didn't really die. She's alive and planning to police the galaxy, along with the Prometheans and their guardians. It was uncovered that Bungie had a similar plan during the first game. Take a listen. There was an alternate very early of the version of the story where when he rediscovered Cortana, she'd like gone berserk with power and wanted to take over Halo in the universe. What happened to that story? It was too good. <laughs> we had to the idea was scrapped, probably for good reason. 343 would then go on to try and redeem Cortana in Infinite before finally killing her off again and replacing her with an exact copy. A big sticking point through the three games, 4, 5, and Infinite, is 343's lack of sticking to new ideas. We'll see this reiterated in the next section. Between Halo 4 and 5, 343 changed up the gameplay quite a lot. They added a slide, clamber, thrust, smart scope, shoulder charge, ground pound, and a hover mechanic. Most people seemed fine with the majority of the new mechanics, except the ground pound or the hover, and to a lesser extent, the shoulder charge. 343's mentality was that Spartans were like walking tanks, so they wanted them to feel super strong by giving them all these abilities. Thanks to all the Spartan abilities, now the maps are designed in a way and scaled up to complement them. There are ledges that you can only clamber up to, ramps that make you want to slide, and lifts that boost you extra high so you can ground pound down to anyone below. To showcase my point, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Halo 3's Heretic versus Halo 5's Truth. 
both iterations of Halo 2 midship. The Halo 3 version is almost one to one with midship, but truth had to be scaled way the hell up now that Spartans can sprint. This may seem obvious, but my point is that Halo 2 and 3, there was no sprint. You always had access to shoot or throw your grenades, unless you were reloading. In Halo 5, when you're sprinting, you're at a disadvantage since your gun is low. There was a video showcasing this and I could not for the life of me find it. It showed someone doing a lap of midship in Halo 2 while shooting and throwing grenades, and a lap in Halo 5 just sprinting sprinting the whole time. They both complete the lap at almost the exact same time. Do with this information what you will. And I think everyone understands that excluding sprint from a modern game is unthinkable, so to implement it, they needed to compromise. Halo 5 had a cut Spartan ability. We'll talk about it, but first, leave the video a like if you're liking it, and subscribe. It's totally free and it helps the channel grow. Thank you. Before we move on, a GDC talk mentioned that a double jump almost made it into the game. Called Boost Jump, the player would use thrusters on their back to gain a significant height advantage. The developer mentioned that it was working on it and it was fun to use, but Clamber was already doing something similar. It uses the same button and most of the maps were already designed without the boost jump. It was easiest to just cut it from the game. Hearing this, fans couldn't help but draw comparisons to Titanfall and would joke about when wall running would be at it. There's no doubt that 343 wanted to go with a new art style. The game looks amazing and the graphics are incredible, but 343 couldn't help but put their touch on a majority of the weapons. The biggest one being the rocket launcher, which has been the same in every Halo game until now. They made it look more generic and eventually brought back the classic design as a legendary version. I could harp on this, but let's quickly speak on Warzone. Halo 5 had a game mode called Warzone that was a mix of firefight from ODST and invasion from Halo Reach. Huge teams on large-scale maps worked together to complete objectives. The game mode went over pretty well, but it was the requisition system behind it that people didn't like. As you played any multiplayer game mode, you'll earn rec packs with a high chance to get weapon and vehicle variations. Rec packs also had a lower chance to drop armor or weapon skins. The negative comes from the option to buy them, making Warzone a pay to win. If you decided to pay for the possibility to get a weapon skin, chances are you'll roll stronger and stronger vehicle and weapons to steamroll your enemies in Warzone. It made the game mode a dice roll since you didn't know what wrecks that your enemies had in their back pocket. Halo 5 launched with a respectable 84 on Metacritic and OpenCritic. What did you think of Halo 5? A majority of this video was just opinion based, so you may totally disagree with me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Overall, I think the multiplayer felt great for the most part. The maps were fine, I think most of them were forgettable. The Spartan abilities are a bit much, so I'm glad they rolled them back in Infinite. In terms of comparing it to the past games, I think Favin put it the best doesn't play like traditional Halo, it isn't designed like traditional Halo, and quite honestly, if you just reskinned all of the game assets, I'm not even sure anyone would even accuse this game of copying Halo. It's that different. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe.